honorable members of the Greek Parliament, honorable members of the Greek government, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for giving me the opportunity to address you today. I'm very sorry I cannot be in Athens with you, but is, as you probably know, today is the day of the informal audiovisual council in Vilnius on media pluralism. So a very important subject, very related to this conference. And I'm very glad to the organizer that gave me the opportunity to address you with this video. The subject of the conference, it's really one of the most important subjects for shaping the future of Europe, digital democracy. In the town that invented democracy, and democracy, it's the participation of everyone to the life of the state. And during the centuries, this concept of uh, equal participation to people has been lost because of the complexity, because of the difficulties in ruling too many. So from democracy participation of all, we more and more have seen ruling elites. With digital technologies, we can be back to the roots. We can be back to people participating directly into the democratic life of a nation. And that's the dramatic change that the new technologies, such as social media, web streaming, are bringing to the democratic life of Europe. People can participate from their kitchen table to the discussion going on in Parliament. People can participate from their sofa to the discussion going on in their own town hall. They can interact, send messages, send opinion. But digital democracy is not just sending messages or giving voice to protest, which is very important, of course. But there's also a very constructive side, which is shaping differently the way the modern state works. And that's a priority for the European Commission and for the Union as a whole. We are three weeks ahead from the European Council that will discuss digital democracy, digital technologies, the future of the digital economy in Europe. We are also a few months ahead of the Greek presidency, which those themes will be a priority. So it's really timely that today those themes are discussed. And I would suggest that there are three directions in which this discussion can develop. The first one is about making sure that uh, the state, the local communities can actually enact and enable the citizens to participate to what they do. The second one is to make sure that the state changes and becomes more efficient using digital technology. And the third one is to make sure that the data that are produced from a state, from public administration, can be used by citizens and companies to actually boost the economy, jobs, growth, and new opportunities for the young people. Let me start with the way uh, local communities of the state can involve more the citizens. Through the social media, through the interactive websites, there could be more, much more interaction and consultation. Especially at the local level, citizens can participate more to public consultation, can uh, actually use their collective intelligence through social media to crowdsource ideas on better legislation. And at the same time, local administrators and central state administrators can understand a little bit better the voice of citizens. So it's a very constructive process that needs to be given a voice, a voice that means changing for the better and changing for the good uh, in the public interest. At the same time, uh, digital means much more efficiency in the state machine. It means 20% saving in the cost. So instead of thinking about the state providing services at a loss, we can think in the future states provided, the modern states in Europe, providing service at the gain for the citizens, at the profit of the citizens by reducing the cost of supplying services and at the same time personalizing the services to citizens and companies. This transformation of the modern state is possible thanks to digital technologies. Three days ago the Commission has approved a communication on changing education, education systems using digital technology. This communication is called Reinventing Education 
and it talks about 24 different actions the Commission and the Member States can do to change completely the way pupils uh, are approaching uh, education in the modern times. More than 80% of pupils in Europe are still not using digital technologies. More than 50% of students are not using e-books. And this is a tremendous competitive disadvantage when compared to the global competition Europe is exposed. We are well aware there are regions of the world which are accelerating when it comes to ICT and we need to be competitive. This is also linked to the possibility to forge new talents in the digital era. In Europe right now there are one million or a filler jobs in the ICT, one million. And when you compare this to uh, rising youth unemployment, uh, you really realize that it is in digital that we are going to have our future and the future for our children. That's why it's important that the school of the future reinforces the ICT skills in the pupils. That's important that uh, we forge more and more new ICT talents. The other important point is about changing the health system using digital technology. Health system will be in 2020 the first expenditure of the modern state all over Europe and we need absolutely to introduce digital technology to reduce the cost and again to have a personalized support at home. The last point is about using the data, the data of the public administration, the data which are for instance uh, in museums or in libraries. This is the richness of most of the European countries and in particular the richness of uh, culture rich countries such as Greece for instance. By digitizing the Greek art heritage, the Greek uh, patrimony when it comes to museums, sites, that means that you will have uh, the possibility to have uh, many young entrepreneurs, many small and medium enterprises offering applications, offering uh, all sorts of uh, different devices and software to learn about the history of mankind, to learn about the history of art. So by opening up a treasure which is a digital treasure of culture, data which are owned by the public administration, there are tremendous opportunities for all citizens and young entrepreneurs. That's why the uh, Commission has proposed and Parliament and Council have approved a directive to open up uh, public data and uh, we also support very much the G8 declaration on open data. Open data policies for modern governments are fundamental to boost the economy and to boost knowledge. And all this would not be possible, data flow, digital democracy, e-health, without a broadband infrastructure. That's why the Commission has recently approved a proposal for a regulation of a connected continent where we want to boost the connectivity all over Europe, connectivity everywhere at cheap prices. At the same time, we want to boost the idea of having open internet and transparent practices when it comes to the access to internet. All this would be possible by a speedy approval of our regulation and again we count very much on the efforts of the upcoming Greek presidency to make this happen. So thank you very much for your attention and I wish you a very good conference today.